I feel so touched to be given such an amount of time to speak. Bless you, my brother. Good morning, church. Uh, I know uh, just uh, for some of, uh, of your curious minds, may, maybe some of you uh, are, are asking, where has George been last Sunday? Since he's paid by the church, he should be here. Oh, sorry, I don't mean that. We were in Tanzania, Pastor, uh, Dr. Julian and I, we were working for seven days. It was a great... Dr. Julian, wave your hand so people know who you are. <laughs> so we were in Tanzania as part of a project initiated by Dr. Julian to deliver medical and uh, community development in places of extreme poverty. And I, I have to say to you, even, even for me as a Brazilian, I was not prepared to face the level of poverty I saw in Kikavu, where uh, Dr. Julian uh, helped to um, set up a medical clinic. People are poor in extreme, and some of them walk about five, ten miles to access probably the only clinic, is that correct, in the area? So the project is becoming bigger, and of course, in due time, we are going to let you know what God is doing through us. Don't worry, I was there seven days off of my holiday, okay? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's fair, but that's the way it is. You know. <laughs> so but I'll, we will show you pictures when time comes. Uh, there is uh, exciting things happening. And we wish the church can be, at some point, part of it as well. So today we're talking about prayer. Um, it's one of the ancient paths we are visiting as a church. We are going to talk about the importance of prayer. So I believe uh, each one of you was given this little book called Try Pray. Um, this is an initiative. Um, started by somebody who turned to God through prayer, although she was not a believer. She was not a church goer. Maybe she was a believer, but not necessarily a church goer. So a research in the UK shows that 20 million adults in the UK pray regularly, but they don't come to church, and they are not fully sure who they pray to. Isn't this interesting fact? 20 million people out there, they pray. Although they don't know to who they are praying to, although they, they not necessarily come to church, but they exercise some form of prayer. So the challenge for us individually is to go through these seven days of prayer, uh, for each day there is instructions given, accompanied by a simple um, experience that one, somebody had in terms of having their prayers answered. So we want to do this for the next seven days. You can do it every day. And after you finish this book, it's very simple, don't be nervous about it. What you do is, with this book, you give it to somebody who is not a Christian, who does not go to church. This basically is a, a guide for, to help people who don't have a strong belief, uh, faith, or not a faith at all, to pray in the right way. If there is such a thing like praying in the right way, anyway, so... You got the message, yeah. Okay, this done. Tick. <laughs> Next thing. Um, I can see on your eyes that you are kind of expecting me to come here and give you a guide to make you better prayers. That's the way it normally works in church, isn't it? I think we have been contaminated 
by guides, instructions, and way that one should pray. The reality is, brothers and sisters, that um, people pray to God in different ways and for different reasons. Uh, we have um, the model given to us by Jesus in Matthew 6, the Lord's Prayer, and Tim led us um, through that. But can we pray again the Lord's Prayer? One, two, three. Our Father, hallowed, thy will, as it is, forgive as we have, but deliver us from evil. Amen. So this is the model, basically, that Jesus gave to us. But people do pray to God for different reasons. Pray to God to reveal His plans and purposes in our lives. People pray for, to God uh, to separate people into ministry or to send them out. People pray to cast evil spirits. People pray as a way of crying out for help, to express regret, to express gratitude, to ask for forgiveness, or to intercede on behalf of somebody. People pray for different reasons and motivations. And one of the things we, I want to help you to do here is to look at prayer as a crucial or essential part of us being disciples of Jesus. It's not just something that we tick, a box we tick and say, okay, I have, I have done my prayer today, I have clocked in, I'm all right with God. And that's it. But prayer has to become a natural part of us being believers and disciples of Jesus. A wholesome way of doing things. So there are not necessarily rules, guidance, points to follow to make us a better prayers. But it naturally flows out of whom you are, of whom I am. On this basis, prayer surrounds me everywhere I am. If I'm in my job, I'm praying, I'm talking to God. If in my home, doing the chores, I don't do much chores. Man. If, suppose I'm doing the chores. I'm praying. Wherever I find myself, regardless of the circumstances of situation, I'm praying. Because prayer is about talking to God. It's open up with God. It's actually allowing God to interact with my life. And he, he, as he allows me to interact of, to, uh, with his life, becomes a natural thing, you know what I mean? Does not become a big thing. Become natural. Do you pray? Of course I pray. I pray because I'm a Christian. I, it's, it's a natural process of talking to God, of, of, of uh, interacting with the God who created me. It's not uh, about a prayer meeting. I think we should stop calling prayer meetings prayer meetings. Because took us into the mode that, oh, yes, yeah, a special thing in prayer. No, prayer should be a common thing. should be something I engage with naturally. I don't need to book a time for prayer. I don't need to book a moment to pray. It should flow naturally as I live out my life as a Christian. Amen? I'll take your silence as you are happy with what I'm saying. Um, Philippians. 
Oh, uh, chances are I'll, I'll get this wrong, to, to be honest. I know that, so. No. Ah, yes. Philippians says, can we read? Come on, help me out. Amen. So the scriptures encourage us to lay bare all our needs before God. If you want to go deeper into what uh, is being said there, is actually we, without any hindrance, without any shame, without any concern, is an invitation to come before God and present to him all of our anxieties, our problems, our concerns, our weaknesses, our vulnerabilities, things that go, go through our minds that if I would, would share with somebody else, no, human people, they would say, come on, brother, you are astray, aren't you? These are the things God wants to listen from us. These are the things God wants us to come before him and share. These are the things that makes us humans and makes us flaw, flawed and in needing desperately for the grace and love of God. These are invitations for us to approach the cross and at the feet of the cross to leave everything there, knowing that God has the power to deal with it. Those things that, that are becoming a burden for you, for me, things that I know that I won't be able to sort out Things that um, my th theological training, my qualification, my uh, uh, training in life or my degree won't help me to solve. Because it's beyond my grasp. It's beyond my powers to solve them. These are the things that God is inviting us to live at the cross. Situations we don't know how to deal with. Things that are draining our energy. God wants us to confine our innermost secrets with him. To be totally open. But sometimes we can't do that. And there are reasons why we can't do that. One of the reasons is because we have learned a pattern of prayer that became a hindrance to us in the long run. I go to the Baptists, they tell me that prayer has to be done that way. I go to the Anglicans, no, God's going to listen to you if you pray that way. I go to the Methodists, they say, no, you know. Everywhere seems to be that prayer, to, to be listened by God, there is a specific way of praying. And I say that uh, we get rid of all these instructions and just be before the presence of God. The most beautiful powerful encounters I personally had with God when I threw the, the rule book. Yeah? Yeah, the rule book. Good. The rule book away and just became myself before God and said, God, I won't tell who I am because you know. I, you, I won't tell you the bad things I have done because you know. I'm just here 
to listen and to interact with you, to be disciplined when I need to be disciplined, to be corrected when I need to be corrected, and to have a cuddle when I need to a cuddle. And sometimes we are not willing to approach the cross and lay, lay everything there because of pride. You know, we are a very proud person. Aren't we? I am sometimes. I'm proud. And sometimes my pride gets on the way between me and God. Because I think, oh no, no. What I have done is too bad to come to God and, and tell him. You know, I did this. Oh, I did that last week. Oh God, I did this. I did that. So I'm such a bad person. I can't go before God and tell him this. What he will be thinking of me. And we forget that God knows us inside out without even us opening up our mouths, God knows us. We need to be able to look beyond pride and recognize that we are completely dependent on the grace of God. So Romans, oh Romans, Hebrews. Oh my, that's not good. That's not good enough. That's not, well, is that not there? Can you find Hebrews 4, 16? Oh, yes. <laughs> Christina, you're going to make my life much easier if you do that. So I'm, I'm... Okay, let's, let's, let's uh, uh, read together. Okay. Approach the throne of grace with confidence. I want you to disconstruct maybe things you learned about prayer. Are you with me? We think about prayer as this single act where I come and make a prayer, say something to God, and off I go. What I'm trying to say to you, prayer is completely around everything we do. And when I approach the throne of God without, you know, booking a time, I'm just being, and I just felt like starting a conversation with God, this is prayer in itself. Am I getting crazy here or... And we need to approach the throne of God with confidence. Because many of us don't approach God for some reasons. And one of the reasons is we think we do, do not know how to pray. And that's right. I don't know how to pray. I know that the Spirit of God translates my broken English before the throne of God. I know the Spirit of God translates my foolish requests before the throne of God. But some of us don't approach the throne of God because we think, oh, you see, actually I have nothing to say because when I, I listen to brother or sister X praying, I think I'm not good enough. Have you ever Felt that way? I have. I have gone to church, fired up to pray. Ah, yes, I'm going to pray today. I'm going to pray. I'm going to show how, how good prayer I am. And suddenly, sister or brother X outsmart me with a beautiful prayer. No, it becomes almost like a pray, prayer off in the church. Let's see who prays louder and with more beautiful words. That's fine. I'm not saying we should not pray that way. But what I'm saying is sometimes we have this wrong vision about prayer 
that's all about the beautiful words that comes out of our mouths. God's not interested how intellectually able we are. What God is looking after is our hearts. And the reality, when you pray, we won't get everything right. We'll make mistakes. We'll ask for things that are absurd before God. But that's fine. Don't panic. God won't rebuke you or chase you out for, from his presence because you or we prayed wrongly. That's part of our experience with God. So approaching the throne with God with confidence is when I am in that position that I will have a goal and I know I will be accepted by God. I won't be criticized by Him. So I approach Him with this confidence. I approach the throne of God knowing I'm a sinner. And regardless, I'm a sinner, God will still listen to me. But God cannot listen to us unless we are close. And the closer you are, the better is our ability to listen to him. You see, um, doing mission work in Albania, the best time of the churches we planted there, four churches, the time that the, church, the churches most grew were, were the time when I did nothing. Yeah. Just prayed. And sometimes, for some of us, doing less is doing more. I did less but did more in terms of praying that God would take the lead and do the things I was not capable to do. And as a result, the churches started growing. Isn't it, isn't it true, Mel? God was not uh, concerned about my laziness in this sense. I would work hard but I would also allow space for God to do the things outside my agenda. And approaching the throne of God is being flexible and resilient to the point that before the throne, I understand that things that God will ask me to do is completely outside my agenda and, I'm so sorry, outside the church agenda as well. is have this boldness, this confidence that before the throne of God, I will be accepted and loved, and because I'm accepted and loved, I can share anything I want, and I won't caught God by surprise. It's being able, once we approach the throne of God with confidence to pray, to spend time with Him, I will also... Feel relaxed to pray dangerous prayer. Mm. Dangerous prayer. I have made some dangerous prayer in my life. At least, you know, I did it as a bunter. Think, oh, I'll pray like that. I don't know. Are you willing to pray dangerous prayer before God? Are you confident enough to do that? That kind of prayer that is completely out of your comfort zone? Oh God, bless Moorgate. Oh Lord. Oh Lord Jesus. I cry before your presence. Moorgate has no Christian presence. Nothing happens there. Nothing happens there. Lord, please bless this part of the town. This is a dangerous president. Because God can say to you, okay, that's right. I have noticed as well. 
Oh, you would make a good person to go and start something like Murgay, Tune? No, God, I just pray. <laughs> no. My role is to pray, to go here, Richard. Richard Shem. He goes, I pray. He goes, I pray, that's fine. But the dangerous prayer makes us also think that we, we could be the answer for what God is trying to do. Oh, please. Jeremiah 33, 3. says, oh, let, let's read together. One, two, three. Call to me. Mm. Okay. The thing about prayer and spending time in the presence of God is also that we learn a lot. The usual approach to prayer, life, is that we come to God with a list of requests, isn't it? 50 requests that you need to fulfill for me. And you bombard, we bombard God with requests. Bang, 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 bang. Finish the job, we leave, that's it. I think that there is more to prayer than this. And in prayer, I lay on God's couch just as when I go to a psychologist, yeah, or a therapist, and I lay on his couch, and then God is able to share with me the unsearchable things that we may not know. Things he wants to share with me, new things, projects, plans he has for our lives. Things that is completely probably out of our grasp at the moment, but things that in time God will be able to realize through us. I have the time to ask him questions, although I may not get the answers I'm looking for, or I may not get the answer the way I want to get the answer. That doesn't matter. But it's this time where I spend time with God and we, we laugh together and, you know, he makes a joke, I laugh, I make a joke, he laughs as well. It's this, it's this kind of relationship that we won't be able to see it because the church told us God is this way, has this form, he thinks that way, that's it. So we lose our ability to be creative in our relationship with God. And this gets on the way of prayer. It took me years and years to see God beyond what the church tells me what God is. Are you with me? Maybe you don't go through these things. That's fine. It's just myself, you know. But um, it's the ability that looking at prayer rather than a, a way of life, than a, a, a set project or program, that is there, and I should, you know, do it. It's a way of life. It's time with God, it's talking to him, it's allowing him to talk to me, it's uh, um, having this conversation that sometimes is beyond, you know, the normal way of, uh, of uh, maybe talking to somebody. And I find no, no, no churchgoers more relaxed with this than churchgoers. Probably we have been contaminated by rules. Set of rules that say, you just pray to God this way. I, <laughs> I know it's a new age thing, but free your minds. <laughs> Let God, <laughs> you know, take control of it and show us new ways of being disciples and to relate with him through prayer in ways that goes beyond we have ever learned in life. 
I'm not inviting you to do tr transcendental reflection. Pay attention. I'm saying, of course, the Bible is our parameter. Everything goes through the Bible. But be open for ways of praying to God and, and, and interact with God, ways you, you know, is beyond what the church told you. Okay, back on track here now. Through prayer, God wants to reveal his purposes and, plan, and plans for our lives. It's a moment to listen, to spend quality time, and to be transformed. Listen, the other thing I struggle with, if prayer does not go the way I want it, I get frustrated and disappointed. Yeah? Yeah? Come on, you do get disappointed when, you know, you, you went there, oh, yes, Lord, heal, heal this person, and the person died. And you say, wow, what a shocker. Did not go the way. I have been praying, Lord, for the lottery numbers, and I never get right, and then you get frustrated. But uh, I think one of the beautiful things that prayer does to us, if not transforming in a specific situation, what prayer does is transforms us. Prayer sometimes won't change a situation, but surely prayer changes us. And what this lady here, oh, this lady, this theologian, Soren King, King, Kingengard, says is interesting. The function, yeah, let's say it together. Of prayer. Yes, I find this fascinating. And thank God he does not answer all of my prayers because this would be more chaotic if he, he did. Thank God that uh, in prayer, I'm transformed, I'm changed. And through the bad or good experiences, and through the answers, whether, I, whether they are no or yes, I'm transformed and I grow with God. But one thing remains certain. God does listen to our prayer. God appreciates time with us. I think the whole thing about prayer is about quality time with God. You know what I mean? It's about enjoying this moment. And when I say that we should approach the throne of God with confidence, goes back to the fact that some of us have our confidence so low that we think, wow, who am I for God to be interested in me? Me? Nah. God is so busy with, with so many things, he could not surely... Spend time with me. And we forget that the whole reason of everything, the most beautiful project that God has ever made is you, is me. There is nothing else in this world that would give more pleasure to God than spending time with the people he loves, people he created, you know? People can send rockets to Mars, and God will say, hmm, okay, that's fine, yeah. Choop, the rocket goes down. But spending time with his creation, wow, that melts the heart of God if anything else. We are the project. And he answers our prayer. Does not matter how stupid. Yeah, there are some prayers we should be careful, yeah? Oh God, I have an iPhone. No iPhone, no, what I have? Oh, Galaxy, sorry, no iPhone. I have a Galaxy S5. God, I just went to Tesco yesterday. I saw Galaxy X7. Would you please 
concede the desire of your servant heart. Now, I think God is more concerned with the people in Kikavo dying in Tanzania and Kikavo because they don't have uh, access to medical health than about you asking for iPhone 7, okay? There are things we, we are not stupid, we know what I'm talking about. But listen to this, because sometimes God does concede the desires of our hearts because he wants us to be happy, okay? There are one or two things. I remember when I was, um, um, I was little, I, I, my faith was not great, you know. Well, I did not know anything about faith. I know we should pray to God when, when we needed things. And I, 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 my, my father ha, had just died, and we, as a family of six, went through a very financial period, very bad, almost have nothing to eat. And I, I was... Um, in the, on the high street, and I saw a beautiful pair of blue um, shoes. At the time, blue shoes was, you know, was very trendy. And I said, oh, God, I, I, I know that my mom says if we pray for something, you give it to us. I have no shoes. Actually, I have one pair of shoes. And I'd love to have blue shoes like that one. After a week, a cousin of mine had bought a pair of new shoes, but the wrong size, and sent to me, do you know what they were? <laughs> the blue shoes I was just looking at, you know, a shop. God does this, you know, because he, he wants to make us happy. But there is limit for our greed, okay? But Dr. Helen Hosevier, missionary to Zaire, Told the, told the following story. Oh, that's what the glass is here for. So. Okay, the story she told was, a mother at our mission station died after giving birth to a premature baby. We tried to improvise an, uh, an incubator to keep the infant alive, but the only hot water bottle we had was beyond repair. So we asked the children to pray for the baby and for her sister. One of the girls responded, Dear God, please send a hot water bottle today. Tomorrow will be too late because by then the baby will be dead. And dear Lord, send a doll for the sister so she won't feel so lonely. That afternoon, a large package arrived from England. The children watched eagerly as we opened it. Much to their surprise, under summer clothing was a hot water bottle. Immediately, the girl who had prayed so earnestly started to dig deeper, exclaiming, If God sent that, I'm sure he also sent, sent a doll. And she was right. The Heavenly Father knew in advance of, of that child's sincere request and five months earlier had led a ladies' group to include both of those specific articles. This is beautiful. God does listen to our prayers. God does, you know, respond to our prayers. When they are done, in sincerity, and when there is a need for that. Iyana Van Zant, wow, sorry for my pronunciation, said, let's read, to, I, I like when we read together because we memorize better. Let's go.
it is just a prayer away. It is just a prayer away. When was the last time we spent quality time with God? When it was the last time when we, we stopped fighting ourselves and conceded defeat to allow God to take it over? When was the last time we had this sincere conversation, communication with God, maybe just to say thank you, or maybe needing to put things right? When was the last time on your Google calendar that we, you booked a time to be with God? I hope your Google calendar is always booked time with God, time with God, time with God, time with God, because out of whom you, we are, you're not just booking a time. But when, when was the last time that we stopped, listened, we prayed, We communicate, we interact, we laughed, we cried together with God. We need sincerely, brothers and sisters, to go back to a prayerful life. We need to go back sincerely if we call ourselves Christians and we don't have even time to say a prayer, to talk to the God who created us. What are we doing? What's the point of the whole thing? We would invest this time here somewhere else. Would be better. But prayer has to be one of the foundations of my Christian faith. Has to be an uncompromising, uncompromising time in my life. I have to be able to give up everything, to stop everything, to spend this little or big time with God. This has to be part of my experience as a woman, as a man of God. We need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for the, our families. We need to pray for the young people. We need to pray so, for so many things so many things, but we also need to pray that God visits us and starts his transformation in our lives. Somebody put it that way. If the request is wrong, God says no. If the timing is wrong, God says slow. If you are wrong, God says, grow. But if the request is right, the timing is right, and you are right, God says, go. But the most important thing of all is to be intentional in terms of prayer. It's a unique individual experience that we need to have. It's not because Sister X or Y is doing it, but it's because I cannot live without the presence of God in my life. You know, when I went to Tanzania, I have to admit, for seven days with Dr. Julian, the first two days was very good to be away from him. <laughs> she said the same to me on the phone. <laughs> she said, no. Oh, the first two days was wonderful, but I miss you. And I said, I miss you too, baby. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> but the same kind of relationship we ought to have with our God. If two days goes by and you don't miss him, something is wrong. Something is wrong. No, you don't need to despair. You don't need to quit on church. You don't need to feel bad about it. Okay? Oh, a little bit bad, yes. 
but not, not to be anxious or desperate, but all we need to do is find again that this thing that drew us back to him. What was it? And it may be to pause and in his presence say, I have got all wrong. Would you forgive me? Would you give me another chance? Would you allow me to walk with you again? Would you allow me to have this prayerful life, these wonderful moments of conversation? Things I want to tell you that I won't tell my friend. Because if I tell my friend, you're going to know again. You're going to know, and Facebook is going to know, and the whole world is going to know. But I know in your presence, I can confine things. And I know that when I come to your presence, Father, I won't, I won't be judged by you. You will accept me the way I am. But as I come to your presence, I also want to be transformed. There are so many things I want to share with you. Would you accept me again? If days have gone by, months, years, since you last talked to your God, there is always time to restart. Let's pray. God, when we talk about prayer, I can't help myself but tear the rule book and, uh, and look at it as uh, this quality time I spend, we spend with you, Lord. A time when I grow, I talk, I, I get things off my chest, I get angry sometimes, frustrated, disappointed. But in the end, all I see your, is your smiley face. Is your gentle touch. Is your cuddle. Is you striking, oh Lord, my hair, my head, and saying, don't worry, things are going to be all right. Just allow me to do things my way. And Lord, I crack before your presence. I cry before your presence. We cry together, we laugh together, Lord. And in the end, through prayer, my relationship with you becomes stronger. Because I know, Lord, you don't mean harm for me. But you want to give me hope, to give me a future. Would you please, Lord, help us rediscover what prayer real means? We need you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing our final song.